going on everybody this is ray hayes coming to you again with another episode of the diversity report first one first and foremost i want to thank you all for tuning in and uh checking out the podcast today as always it's never too long never too short uh, so you got a few moments of your time you give me a few moments of your time and uh just hear me out uh, today's episode, I wanted to talk about some, uh, I guess, trending news uh, as of uh, last week, uh, being that I know some HBCUs and other colleges are starting to go on new student orientation, uh, which began this week for a lot of uh, colleges. In particular, uh, my alma mater, alma mater, Morehouse, Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, they started NSO this week. A new student orientation, and there was some big news uh, about this year's NSO, and some news I hadn't heard of in a while, or I don't know if this is the first time in history this hasn't happened, but it's somewhat of encouraging news, and hopefully once uh, uh, this, I mean, a lot of people hear about it, maybe other colleges take he and uh, do what this president, Morehouse College president is doing. Uh, but Morehouse College president, he's going about staying in the freshman residence halls uh, for the week of NSO. And he's going to attend uh, different events that, that will be hosted for the freshmen throughout the week. And I, I definitely want to say I applaud him. President Thomas, I definitely applaud you because with that being said, you can learn a lot within a week's time about a college, the staff, the residents, and you can build a better connection with these students. Not only the students who's gonna be in the hall that the president will be located in, but the overall student body. You can build a better connection with these young men and a connection that can be so strong and so tight that when they do graduate, they'll be willingly giving money to the universities, or willingly uh, recommending their friends or their children or their son to attend the college. Uh, so this is this is great. So because now uh, President Thomas can see the infrastructure, he can see some of the the things the students deal with, whether it be, I mean, I'm sure not during the first week you're not going to have any hot water or bugs or anywhere but you'll see that if it if it comes to happen and he can make he can make something happen and you can have these conversations these late night conversations with these young men about what they experienced with the staff what they experienced when they went to the financial aid office you have a student come in and say so and so won't even talk to me so and so won't even give me a chance the president can hear these things, go talk to these people, understand why they're not communicating or giving these students the best customer service possible. And me, myself, I, I, I can say going going to Morehouse, I experienced some of the bad customer service. And that's not, I'm not trying to bad mouth Morehouse. That's at almost any HBCU. And at any college or university, they're all, you have those people who are the bad apples of the group and a lot of times they're overlooked and they're there for years 10 20 years doing the same thing over and over and we wonder why a college or university isn't growing but in order for it to grow you have to get rid of some bad apples or you have to talk to these bad apples and get them on the right track Give them nutrition to help them grow into a good apple, so to say. Teach them. Educate them what they're doing wrong. Let them know that it's not right and it will not be tolerated. Uh, like I said, I hope some other universities heed this advice or uh, presidents so they can go in and talk to their students. And with especially the freshmen coming into the college because you can, you can make the first impression on them immediately. Because this is the first introduction to college life now i'm not saying the president should in, intrude on the student's privacy but i mean he definitely should have those late night conversations 
Uh, you're going in the lobbies and you're sitting down talking. And with him going to the, uh, the, the events, I think that will be make a big difference too because they can see what they're lacking. And, and, and at not just HBCU, but other universities as well, they can, if they start going to these things, they can see what needs to be adjusted with their own eye. So with that being said, I definitely applaud uh, President Thomas. Uh, I definitely want to say uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, taking upon this task because you could be in your, in your, at your home. You could be with your family, but instead you're with these young men who are technically, they, they, these are your, your new family. And I'll always say this until the day I die, Morehouse is the biggest fraternity in the United States of America. Better yet, Morehouse is the biggest fraternity in the world. The bond during that four-year period is somewhat unbreakable. You, pl- <laughs> like you, you say when you go online, when, you, when you're acting when you're actually in the Greek fraternity, you're pledging. For those four years, you're pledging. You're pledging. You're getting your stripes. You're learning the ins and outs. You're going through the pain and suffering. But when, it, when you're done with that process, when you come out through the end of that tunnel, you have the privilege to say that you're a, a, a Morehouse man. Because when you first come in, you're just, you're green. You're, you're just a man of Morehouse. But when you leave, you have that title. And no one can take away that title from you. No one. Me and Jamie, I mean, we built the bond at Morehouse. I hated, I hated the school at first. And it was just immaturity. But guys like Jamie and other Brandon and other guys that were in the residence hall, they came to explain to me, make a difference. If you see something not happen, happening that you want to happen on this college or on this campus, do it yourself. And granted, you can get that at a Howard. You can get that at a Hampton. But that Morehouse Mystique... It's untouchable. It's, it's untouchable, and it's a uh, it's a sight to see and be a part of. One thing that uh, I've been seeing a lot lately, lately, although a lot of the rituals or the things we do when you're coming into Morehouse as a freshman have been broadcast on social media, and me personally, I hate that. I hate it because it's going into college. You didn't get that. You, you you didn't know what was going to happen. And that was the like, excitement of it. You didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know what was going on. You hadn't seen this before. You hadn't seen that. But now you have these young men coming into the college. Well, they're seeing everything that's going to happen during NSO Week. On Facebook. On YouTube. Or just on the World Wide Web. And that sucks. Now, if you, you, you back in the day, I heard it from people, word of mouth. But now to actually see it, in my personal opinion, it takes away that excitement from them. But it also takes away the mystique uh, of NSO Week and of Morehouse College. Uh, but beside the point, uh, once again, thank you, President Thomas. Uh, uh, now I definitely hope other universities uh, heed upon this message and uh, do, do what he's doing. And another thing I wanted to talk about before I end the, the podcast is that college isn't for everyone. Uh, a few months ago, I don't know, it's going to be a few months ago, probably at the beginning of the year, I was writing articles on com about how you have students and parents telling their kids, you have to go to college, you have to go to college, you have to go to college. College is not for everyone. There's tons of opportunities out there. You can start your own business. You can go into the trades. You can make the same amount of money or even more. The trade industry is seeking qualified individuals. But a lot of people who are, the, the, the jobs are the openings, they, they don't have enough qualified individuals. They don't have enough skilled tradesmen because People are going away from the vocationary schools and going to the colleges. And like I said, 
when they tell you to look from your right and to your left during that first week of college, one of those persons is not going to be here or graduate with you. That's so true. But we have to educate young men and women and let them know there are other opportunities beside college and also to teach them about the benefits of running your own business. Small businesses in the United States make are the backbone of our economy. They make this economy boom. And if you teach them that, hey, you can do this in high school or during that first year out of high school and explain it to them, hey, there's a chance that you don't have to go to college and get up on this whole lot of debt because you may not have the grades, you may not be an athlete, you may not have the scholarships, but you can go to this trade college, this, tra- this trade school. You can learn to be an electrician. You can learn to be a, a plumber. Because we need these skills. We need these these things in society. Plumbers make almost forty dollars. I mean they don't I'm sorry, they don't almost make they make more than forty dollars an hour in Chicago. And well overtime is double pay when you're working for the city of Chicago in the water department. Electricians make good money. But to, when you going about pushing kids and say, Hey, you have to go to college, you have to go to college. We're doing a disjustice to them, and we, it needs to stop. I look at my niece, and, and I see that the fact that, okay, she may not be going to a college, but she's making the best decision for herself. She doesn't want to take out all those loans. So, okay, I'm going to go to a community college for two years, and then I can go to a university of my choice. But during that time, that two years while I'm at community college, make sure I get the scholarships. For when, I, when it's time to go to a, a four-year a university, I won't, I, there's no excuse. I, I will not be able to say that I can't go because I don't have the money. But I have the grades. Now I have the scholarships. So, I mean, just the fact that we have to let kids know that is extremely important. Uh, before I go, uh, I wanted to let you all know that on a daily basis, me and my co-host, Jamie White, Coach Jamie is a co-host of the Diversity Report, uh, we'll be releasing a podcast with the both of us probably next week. Uh, but if you go to our website, www.supplierdnews.com, we have a ton of information about uh, the, the latest news going on with the Small Business Association, uh, all what's going on in the world of small businesses, uh, diversity news, diversity in tech, uh, diversity within a Fortune 500 companies. We have information about uh, veteran-owned businesses, how to set up your own veteran-owned businesses, tips, suggestions. We have all that on our website at www.suppliardnews.com. Please check us out, leave us some comments, but most importantly, give us a little bit of your time. Just uh, visit the website. I think you may enjoy it if you enjoy this podcast. Uh, and if you enjoy some of the other podcasts that me and Jamie have put out in the past. Uh, with that being said, I want to thank you all for uh, taking time out today to listen to the Diversity Report with your host, Ray Hayes. I hope you all have a good weekend. Most importantly, a good Friday. And with that, I'm out. <laughs>